We are live. I'm joined by my dear friend, dear brother, incredible Elliot Hulse. We were going to be joined by Father Coppins. Unfortunately, he has car issues. He does send his regards to everybody. But I am joined by my brother in a live show. We've done other shows together. I think it's the first time that we're live, though. Elliot, my friend, my brother, happy feast day of the Immaculate Conception. How are you doing, brother? Yes, sir. Happy feast day to you as well. Uh, doing great on this fine Friday and uh, looking forward to just catching up with my old friend. Yeah, no, no doubt, brother. Thrilled to be here with you. <laughs> uh, and hey, every time I get to talk with you, man, we have a blast. It's like really two brothers sitting down. Uh, we can really talk about anything. Uh, I, I mentioned to you backstage when we were talking, you're looking lean and mean. You're looking good, brother, looking healthy. And I, I love saying that because every, every time I talk to my brothers, my dear friends, and every time they look healthy, it warms my heart. And, and Elliot knows very well um, because it, it pains me whenever I see friends that I love not doing well. I want people to be yeah. physically healthy, mentally healthy. Uh, brother, you could maybe tell the audience a little bit. What have you been up to? Uh, you're looking healthy. You're looking good. What's going on in your world? It's kind of crazy. So um, I'm getting leaner, but I'm gaining weight. And it's a, it's a strange thing because I'm preparing to do another round of strawman shows next year just you know going for it um and i've instilled a what i call a black fasting bodybuilding meal plan and so you know black fast is uh you know what the ancient church did or you yep. know earlier in you know previous to a lot of the changes that we've had in the church uh recently would would fast until 3 p.m during lent and i called it the black fast and, yeah, uh, they would go pretty extreme. I mean, even like um, not drinking water and stuff like that. So just a little bit more of a serious fast. And I got used to doing that last from last Lent. And I was like, wow, this is, I can make this a lifestyle. And so um, following a routine where I'm fasting until around 3 p.m. every day and then making sure that I hit 50 percent protein. And then the other 50% is split between carbs and, and, and fat, depending on the day that I'm training. And mm. man, it's, it's kind of crazy because usually in terms of, you know, looking lean, you would, you would lose weight. I am losing weight, right. but I'm actually gaining weight and getting leaner yeah. with this plan. So it's pretty, pretty spectacular. And, and you're probably feeling great as well, right? Clean, man. You know, just eliminating all kinds of, uh, useless foods, you know, uh, yeah. the tendency, I, I know you were power lifter, strong man, strength athletes, yeah. you know, we like to eat, you know, and so there's not too much that will pass my, you know, pass my face on the plate that I will say no to. But these past right. few months, it's like the same foods every day. I, it, and then it's not boring yet, but it's just repetitive. It's like, you know, stick yeah. to the same foods, same calories, same macros. And uh, that's how you get results. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, without a doubt. And, and you know, uh, very often um, I am very careful to uh, to lean out and to be very, very careful what I eat during this particular time of year. And, and I, yeah, I got friends of mine that tell me, you know, why? You know, you're in the holiday season. You know, you got to binge. No, you don't. You know what? I want to look good in photos. I want to look good in public. I want to feel good. And, you know, maybe we could talk about that a little bit. The fact that when you Live a healthy lifestyle, in my opinion. You let me know what you think about this. My when I live a healthy lifestyle, I watch what I eat, I watch what I consume. It really has been a key to my spiritual life as well. Living a life as a Catholic Christian, uh, and and I've even heard it from our our evangelical friends and people from other religions how living healthier lifestyles really has helped their spiritual life grow. Uh, have you noticed that as well for yourself? Absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, fasting in and of itself is a means of mortification, right? Which teaches you to temper the passions. Yeah. Um, but I think there's also something physiologically going on there too. You know, when we're not constantly digesting food, the, the energy in the body is more available for higher pursuits. Thoughts yeah. get clearer. You know, there's a deeper connection. My my prayer life has just gone through the roof. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, I, I think you're 100 percent right. You know, our faith is is an embodied faith. Uh, Christ is the God incarnate, right? And so Amen. we are designed in a way to reflect the glory of God. We are the glory of God. And so, uh, as long as we're stuffing our faces with 
you know, junk food or, you know, not eating and sleeping and training and treating our bodies properly, the temple, you know, the, the temple's going to be a little empty or a little diluted, I'd say. Yeah. No, no there's no doubt about that. You're, you're, you're correct on that point. Now, have you ever, and this probably is, you're probably going to say in the, the affirmative, have you ever had an experience where you've felt a strong spiritual connection through a weightlifting kind of journey or, or, you know, any kind of strong man preparation or anything? Has that ever, have you ever felt that in your life? That's interesting. Yeah. I can't say I have. Okay. But my training is very much like meditation. Uh, you know, I don't listen to music. Um, as I've gotten older, it's less a matter of like, you know, I don't want myself up. And, you know, like when I was younger, you know, I'm, <laughs> you know, smelling the salts and oh, slapping. Yeah. And, yep. You know, getting all pumped up, listening to like rock and rap. Yeah, uh, my training these days is very it's it's like meditation. Like when I'm breathing, I'm very focused on the rhythm of my breath, bringing my heart rate down, um, just being very focused and and, and uh, just dialed in to what my body is feeling at any in every moment when I'm lifting. So, you know, in a way there's a lot of mindfulness and you could say that, you know, the more mindful we are, the closer we are to God, right? It's not a mindless, you know, throwing ourselves around, yeah. it's being present, being fully present. So when you consider that, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe my training is a form of prayer in a way, you know, just right. being at one. Yeah. Great, great point there. So you, you would definitely know uh, that there is a, certain definite mind body connection with oh, yeah, yeah and, and now now how important is that is it important to have that mind body connection because i've got a lot of friends elliot that at times will say ah you know what i gotta go in there gotta go in the gym uh do the business and get out uh you know who cares gonna throw it around uh there really is no necessity to have that mind body connection uh but i have noticed that that mind body connection really is essential what are your thoughts on that well, there's nothing but mind-body connection. Yeah. I, I think this idea that the body and the mind are separate is uh, is false. You know, it's a part of the reductionist thinking in our you know society. Uh, the body is the mind. I mean, where where does if you want to take it down to the physical level, like where does the brain stop? Right. Yeah. If we if we have the brain in our head, well, then you have this tail that comes oh, down yeah. out of the brain right into the body we call that the spinal cord and that tail is not all outside the tail all these branches that reach out and innervate every organ our whole our whole muscular system it's all tied into one thing we're one bioenergetic mechanism so to yeah. say mind is over here and body's over here is to be is schizoid it's split where it's yeah. it's a it's a pathology you know and our world does not, our world sort of facilitates that pathology, right? Like just think about education, you know, uh, children are getting out the outdoors less and less. It's more a matter of how can you just sit down and absorb through your, through your brain, you know, just seeing and reading and listening as opposed to getting physically engaged with the work that we do. And as men, we're designed to learn kinesthetically, you know, kinesthetic yeah. learning. I got to get up and I got to do the thing and I got to experience the thing for it to really be a, a, a whole brain, whole body experience. So I don't think anytime we think that we're, uh, you know, not mind body, it's because we're split and that's right. a function of the ego. That The truth is we're always mind body. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no doubt. What is going on there as well, Elliot? I remember when I was younger, I'm sure this, you'll say the same uh, for your experience. I'd get out a lot. You know, I'd go out, I'd get dirty, I'd get in the mud. You know, I'd play a lot. We're living in an era where it really is unfortunate on many levels where uh, people are stuck to their, you know, their devices, whether it be iPad, iPhones, or any kind of tablets. And they don't want to get out. They don't want to get to moving. They don't want to do physical activity uh, because they're too tired, if you will. A lot of the times I hear, I'm too tired. Well, a lot of the times you're tired because you are not physically healthy. Maybe the, you need to right. get out and move in order to not feel tired. I promise you, you're going to feel good about getting out and moving. 
what do you think is going on? Have you seen uh, more tendency, more prevalence to people less and less wanting to get out and get moving? You know, it's we're all there. You know, we have more options than ever before. There's more options. And when there's more options, things that are important get watered down. And, and what takes their place are, you know, the, the easy things, the comforting things, the things that stimulate, you know, instant gratification. And, you know, I, you could say it's a, it's the times, but like if there were cell phones and, you know, the, the tremendous screens that we're using now, a hundred years ago, well, it, it would have been an eight, it would have been a 1920s problem. <laughs> right. Also, not just the 2020 problem. It's a, yep. I don't want to say a problem, but it's a human tendency. And, you know, we speak about men and effeminacy. It's like, Hey, yeah. as long as it's there, we're going to fall into it. And so the problem is that there's too many options and it requires us to be aware and, and have more discipline. You know, it's tough to live today or it's, or it's easy to look around today and say, oh, everybody's lazy. Everybody uh, is, is, you know, they're not doing anything. But you to, to live just normally, it's a normal human today requires 10 times the discipline than it oh, yeah. would 100 years ago. They didn't need the discipline to stay off the screens. They didn't need the discipline to stay away from yeah. the food. They didn't need the discipline to you know, not be promiscuous or using pornography. All those things are here now and it's and we have to be even stronger than our yeah. grandparents were. Great point there. And I've got to be very clear whether it, it, it uh, I'm not here to tickle people's ears. Elliot, the brother knows that I'd be very clear. Uh, the idea of being uh, uh, handcuffed to pornography and the idea of, of um, just a, you know, multiple partners and what have you, it really is effeminate rather than masculine. Uh, you should yeah. be building up your family uh, build a family. You don't have a family yet. Okay. You know, work and getting a family. And when you have a wife, when you have a family, water your garden, build your family, take care of your family. I'll tell you right now, there's nothing more effeminate than going out uh, with multiple partners, not, not holding to your vows and really setting a horrible example for your child or your children. Uh, and that is a problem that we see today. And it really is. And I, I, I very often, I know you our great devotee as well to wonderful St. Joseph, look towards St. Joseph as a magnificent model of, of true masculinity. And, and there's a way that masculinity can be healthy, should be, should be healthy. Uh, and then there's a way you can say, look, that is really seriously, seriously is effeminate. And uh, effeminacy is sim simply not a good thing in the way that we're talking about it. It's not a good attribute for a male to have. Uh, would you agree with those particular points that I've laid out? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm happy that you brought up St. Joseph, uh, you know, oh, yeah. the, her, the most chaste spouse. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, it, well, a lot of this that we're just that we're experiencing right now, you know, we're talking about the screens and stuff, but it starts with the sexual revolution because that, oh, yeah. you know, that was like se sex became entertainment at that point. And with the birth control pills and, you know, and, and basically the destruction of the family, you know, removal of the father as the, as the head and all these things. So it's like, it's been a slippery slope. You know, it started with, you know, giving men free women and men free reign for free sex and yeah. separating it from procreation to, you know, where we're at right now, where it's like, yeah, most people take pornography for granted to be addicted to, you know, all kinds of chemicals and substances is normal. Most people are medicated on all kinds of psycho psychotropic drugs on pain medication. I mean, I, I can't say, I can't pinpoint and say that it's exactly the 1960s, but there was a big bomb set off and we weakness now abounds. Yeah, no, without a doubt, there really weakness does abound. And you know, here, here's the other thing, and I, I do want to be um, respectful for people that that maybe will say, well, Elliot and William, uh, you know, I don't lift. I do other physical activities, and, and I take care of my family. Hey, tip of the hat to you. Uh, very mm -hmm. clearly, we're talking about strength in spirituality and strength in, in, in being a uniter of your family. We don't say, yeah, you got to get to the gym and smash those weights in order to be a strong person, very clearly. Yeah. There are other physical ways as well, though. But one thing that I do want to, to ask you, you know, this is a good question. Um, what about people that'll say, you know, William and Elliot, I, I, you know, I don't lift. 
But, you know, I, I would like maybe, can you recommend any kind of physical activity for mental and physical well-being? Are there other things that I can do if I don't actually lift weights? And, and what would you say, is there anything that you would recommend that people, men or women, do if, if they don't want to lift weights to be physically and mentally well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to preface this by saying that nothing beats lifting weights. And it's not just a meathead thing, you know, we're powerlifters and strong men. There's nothing beats it because it 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 fights against aging. You know, yeah. as you as you age, you get weaker, but the more you use your muscles, the stronger you'll be well into your old age. And we know that that with regard to just being functional, that's super important. And and this is science has shown this. Studies have shown like lifting leads to longevity. Lifting leads to quality of life. You don't need to be a power lifter, but you do need to exercise your muscles. We were convinced, you know, in the 1980s, and a lot of it still, you know, perpetuates today, or is prevalent today, that like cardio is everything. Oh, cardio, cardio, cardio! But uh, the science shows that that's, in fact, can e lead to accelerated aging. Too much cardio, yeah. and so it's the exact opposite of what we're designed to do. We're not designed to go long periods of, you know, uh, sucking wind. Uh, we're designed to like run, jump, lift, do like bouts of exercise and nothing beats nothing beats lifting but to, to 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 answer your question and to sort of supplement your lifting or whatever else you're doing nothing beats walking we're designed to walk like we're we should be walking most places that we go of course we have the the technology right one of the technologies is, is automobile right it's a beautiful thing just like the screens screens are great you know, that's how you and i are speaking it's, yep uh, automobiles are, are an amazing thing too but like we've just become so uh we detached from just the normal basic gate that got us from place to place uh, that nobody walks anywhere anymore. You know, you get to this parking lot, like people will circle the parking lot, try to get a spot up front rather than like, yeah, there's a bunch of spots back there. I purposefully park in the back. It's like, yo, all the spots are back here. I don't have to squeeze into a spot with my truck. And it's an extra few steps. Everybody, we know everybody has one of these. This is yep. the simplest thing to do. There's an app on here. It's, it's functioning whether you know it or not. It's on. Go to it. It's called a health app. and yep. It tells you how many steps you've been taking a day. Aim for, you know, if you're if you're only taking 2000 steps a day, try to double it. You know, like make a game out of it. I try to hit a, I try to hit 10,000 steps a day, which is is tough. And I walk a wow. lot. I walk 3 miles in the morning with my dogs. I go out wow. there and I walk multiple times a day. Yesterday I got 9,000, which was like pretty close for a long time. But um, you know, you definitely absolutely want to track your walking and increase your walking. Walking is good for mental health, for emotional health, for your physical health, obviously heart health, burning fat, you know, nothing burns fat like like low intensity, steady state cardio, not running, but just walking at a good clip, at a good pace. That really is a good point there. And it reminds me a lot of myself when I go to the market, uh, Elliot, I'll be honest, <laughs> I don't care about any parking spot that is closest to the front. I, I don't care. I park purposely. I park uh, mm -hmm. away from that. I don't mind walking at all. In fact, I enjoy it. Hey, I can get a little bit of extra exercise in. Great. It isn't good. Mm -hmm. It's great for the heart. We have to be very clear. Uh, as, mm -hmm. as you know, I know a lot of the audience, by the way, we've got a great crowd right now. Uh, bless all of y'all. We have 127 tuning in. I know a lot of you all might be younger than us or maybe older. But you're going to get to a point where you should be already where you're conscious of your heart health. And as you pointed out, brother, walking is incredibly a very, very mm -hmm. important activity. And very often uh, people tend to disparage that or not want uh, to walk or not want to do physical activity. Look, I'm going to tell people right now that are tuning in uh, physical activity. It, it will it will translate over to discipline in spiritual practices. I guarantee mm -hmm. that. I can guarantee that it, it really, really will. Uh, and it will make you, look, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel better about yourself. Um, and, and, you know, what better day to talk about this than today, the Feast of Our Lady, uh, because I'm reminded of the incredible masculine figure, our 
chased incredible saint, the great Saint Joseph, who he had a he had a, a, a career in carpentry. He would have been a strong man. He would have been a strong guy. Yeah. You, you had to have been strong to do that. Isn't that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I could just imagine, you know, like working with your hands all day long. You know, most of my work is behind this screen right here. Well, you know, he was lifting and dragging and pushing and hammering and carrying and walking. And so absolutely, yep. that's what uh, that's what we're built to do. Yeah. And, and we know when we look at the historical record, uh, without a doubt, another figure that people at times they don't realize some do, uh, but St. Peter as well. Have you been a fisherman? The, the guy would have been, would have been a pretty physically strong guy. Uh, yeah. They were really in a ton of those, a ton of those fish a day. Uh, and, and you had to be physically strong for that. So um, again, all of this really does point to look, uh, be conscious of your health, be conscious of, of your physical well-being, And we guarantee that it will, translate on over to the spiritual life i very often uh and i don't know if you do this uh very often when i am lifting uh i will get to the point where i will say a little prayer before there's either a heavy lift or a lift that is important or throughout my lifting period again uh now i may be different i don't want people to pelt me over the head i have never personally liked rap but i used to listen to heavy heavy rock uh i don't anymore <laughs> Uh, a lot of the time, and indeed, sometimes I'll put Gregorian chant on mm -hmm. during lifting to help you meditate, to help you really focus uh, on yourself, because that mind-body connection is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think really, really, really being in tune with your body and physically being well is very important for the mental state of being. And I think that if a lot of people, they would realize that their spiritual life will be growing, will grow if they only put a little bit more care into that. Now, let me ask you this, brother. Do you have a particular workout where you say, William, I, I love working out every day of the week or five days, six days, whatever it may be, but there's this particular movement, William. You know, it's right here. It is my favorite. Do you have anything or do you have a number of favorite movements? I like odd object training. That's why okay. I compete in straw, man. Any kind of stone or tire or log like there's just something primal because these objects yeah. are like akin to what you would find in nature right i mean what's yeah. more basic than picking up a stone <laughs> yeah strong man competition was like hey heavy stone can you pick up yeah. whoever who's picking up the stone and so it taps into something very primal and and, and root based and so you know, picking up a barbell, even if the barbell is heavier than the stone, it sort of feels like a luxury. It's like, ah, you know, here I am with my fancy barbell. Picking yeah. up a stone, where it's all gritty and dirty and heavy. Man, that just makes you feel like a man. <laughs> I, I am with you there. And I'll, I'll share what one of my favorite movements with the audience. One of my favorite is, um, I mean, people are probably just going to laugh, but one of my favorite movements is, uh, positioning myself on a big kind of uh, brick kind of uh, seat, if you will, and just piling up uh, bricks on top of my on top of my lap and doing dips with those weights. Uh, it, it's just wonderful. It just feels great because I'll tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing. I love doing. I, I love doing uh, skull crushers or close grip bench press for the triceps or, or push downs, pull downs, whatever you want to call them. But there's something nitty gritty and special about just busting out those uh, those dips uh, <laughs> out in the out in nature. I don't care if it's hot out there. I know it gets hot in the Texas heat. I know it gets hot where you're at as well. I don't care mm -hmm, if it's cold. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's raining. Uh, and doing those dips with, you know, bricks all over you. You know, you may think I'm crazy, brother. You're probably thinking, man, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, isn't it? There's something about the way, as a male, the way God formed us in this particular way. Is, isn't that incredible? Yeah. We're meant to survive in nature. But, you know, it's pretty incredible to be a human being because we also have the image of God in, in, in stamped on our mind, you know. Not to diminish that at all. You know, of course, we're saying the body is the mind and it's all one thing. Right. But, you know, it's pretty incredible that our bodies are designed in such a way that it can carry and 
make use of this credible big head we have i think of you know most of the animals we we have the biggest head the biggest brain right so we get to use these 10 fingers and 10 toes to you know carry this beautiful gift around yeah now the one thing that i've get i've I've been asked quite often and i'm curious how you'd answer people that that wonder they'll say okay well william and elliot are there any particular practices that you would recommend for me to get into lifting and become dedicated to become dedicated and want to become a better version of myself? Do you have any practices that you ever recommend uh, to people, to family members, to friends? Is there anything that you say, you know what, uh, this has worked for me now. Uh, for me, it'd be hard for me to answer that, Elliot, because I think like yourself, lifting, you know, I gotta, I've got to eat. And I've got to drink water and I've got to lift. That is the way I view my life. Pretty sure you're probably the very same way. Um, what about people that don't have those particular kind of practices? Do you give any advice? What kind of advice would you give that kind of a person? It's interesting. I, I listened to a conference with Father Ripper Gurons and, uh, you yeah. know, some of the guys that work with him in spiritual warfare, you know, exorcisms. And one of the most fascinating things about the protocol that they use that I remember hearing, I think Jesse Romero said this, mm -hmm. he says that you know, the, the, as powerful as the prayers are, as powerful as the prayers themselves are, it's the routine that matters. It's the rear, it, you know, Angelus at 6, 12, 6, 6 noon, 6, six not 601, not 615, yeah. not 559, 6 noon, 6, 6 noon, 6. And, and it's that rigor that cleans up the spiritual life. It, yeah. and, and I think it's the same thing with our, you know, exercise. Like, okay, maybe you don't want to power lift or bodybuild. Maybe you like CrossFit. Maybe you, maybe you want to go run. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe, maybe it's gymnastics. Whatever it is, it, it, it really doesn't matter. But whatever it is, make it consistent. It's the consistency. It's the rigor. It's the discipline. Hey, if you're going to do it, you're saying that you do it. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, don't let a day pass by. It's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Get there every single time. Because every time you open the, you know, you you, you slip up, you open the door for sloth to, to sneak in, right? Our yeah. effeminacy will sneak in. So it's about the routine. The, 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 the doing of the thing is more important than the thing that's being done. Yeah, that really is a great point. And, and to really emphasize that, um, Having that kind of routine is so important. And let me tell the audience, and I know that I've got a few people that are watching right now uh, from Europe, from Germany in particular. If you go to Germany, you visit Germany, and if you think that you're going to hop on that train that you bought a ticket for, you bought the ticket for 2 p.m., if you think you're going to hop on that train at 2.02 and that train will still be there, uh, no, that train is right on time. You better be on time. And that kind of a discipline, that kind of a discipline you find in Germany, in particular in Bavaria, and I know that very well, um, is the kind of discipline that we all should have. We really shouldn't. It would, in my opinion, it'll take you very far. Now, you talked about, um, we talked about it earlier, and, and it really is an unfortunate thing that uh, we're living in a time where uh, people are normalizing effeminacy among men. The culture is making it normal. Uh, mm -hmm. And in my opinion, it's, it's borderline, if not demonic, to try to make man, uh, take man, rip him out of the image and likeness that God designed man for. We mm -hmm. read it there right in the scripture very clearly. Uh, man is, is made in the image and likeness of God. We are, all are, but very clearly man has a role in this life. And, and it seems downright demonic the way the culture at times tries to weaken the way men are just the other day. Uh, I, I saw an article, my oh, goodness, the, I wouldn't have ever thought of reading articles like this in the news many, many years back, where it was normalizing um, open, open marriages. I mean, shocking, shocking that we're living in times where we're trying to normalize this. In my opinion, trying to normalize that is the height of, it's, it's demonic, and I think that weakening man is something that we're living in a time where we need to realize that is not normal. Have you noticed that that has become more and more prevalent in, in our current culture? You know, I think the pushback is beginning, though. Yeah. 
you oh, know, yeah. I look at I look at a lot of like the call them Generation Z. And it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting that you know they call them. You know, I I think you and I are X. I'm Generation yeah. X. Yep. And it's like you know we just got closer and closer to the end of the alphabet because I think once once you get to Z, what's next? Well, then you got to start all over again. And I think this generation, the young people coming up, they have seen through the folly of the boomers. There, oh, yeah. a lot of them. You know, I'm not saying all of them, but there's a seed. There's a there's a there's, there's a, a a group of them. There's a lot of them. When oh, you yeah. talk to them, they're into tradition. They're into masculinity. Even the women, like a lot of the young ladies, like they they. My daughters use this term the other day. I forgot. It's called uh, trad core. I think trad core. Oh. It's sort of like you know, like it's it's sort of trendy, you know, to to be a trad wife. You know, a lot of girls like they're going back to wearing long dresses and yeah. being traditional and wanting a husband and wanting to have a, a marriage and a family. Like it, it it's trendy on TikTok. Like some of my daughters, they find it, they show they'll show it to me. They're like, hey, look, these girls, her whole whole channel. She's got like you know a million subscribers. It's all about how to be a traditional woman. So yeah. you know. Every action is measured by the sentiment from which it proceeds. So, of course, you know, there's a little bit of uh, ego there, of course, you know, because, you know, you're, you're, you're vying for attention. But it shows that part of the zeitgeist, the part of the, the, the mindset is it's not cool to be a degenerate anymore. Like no. the punk today is conservative. The punk in the 1980s was, like, you know, screw the system, screw tradition, screw this, screw that. Where it's like we're watching, at least in the Catholic Church, a huge surge towards yeah. traditional Latin mass. And yeah. and you know, like I I have a SPX, you know, about 40 minutes from me, so I'll go every once in a while. It's full of young people. Yeah, I go to you know the Novus Ordo mass that's local. It's all old heads, all white heads. So you see that, like the the, the generation that brought us most of the degeneracy. The, and I'm not blaming the boomers; it's just the world right, that right. came in. They're all white heads. They're on their way out, and the things that they're doing are no longer cool. They think it's cool, but it's not cool. And the 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 young people are coming up, and they're they're. It's funny because they're adopting, you know, two thousand year old traditions. They're bringing back the old yeah. stuff because it's cool to be trad now. <laughs> Yeah, that, those are really good points, and that's a great, great point. I very often note when I look online or even in person, I have noted that when talking about liberal so-called Catholic churches, and I want to be very clear when I say that, uh, these are not churches that are even in communion with Rome. Uh, these are churches where you've got uh, women priests and women bishops that have just gone rogue. They open their own yeah. parishes up. They're not in communion with Rome. They don't. They're, they don't view Francis as a pope. They're just whatever. Um, mm. And I want people to to look at those. They're they're all over Facebook online. Their churches are virtually dead. They are. Yeah. There's hardly anybody there. Hardly anyone there. And then. You look at churches that are incredibly vibrant. A tip of the hat to my dear brother, Elijah Yassi, who loves the traditional Latin mass. Church is packed. And then, of course, as well, I want to give a, a, a shout out. There are some great uh, Novus Order parishes where uh, they're mm -hmm. filled, vibrant with the youth. But the youth that are there, they want to hearken to tradition. They want faithfulness. They want the priest to be faithful. They want orthodoxy to be taught. From the pulpit, yes. tiny O, of course, and we're seeing an explosion in that. Where the and guess what? Uh, for people that think that the liberal movement's going to win out, no, we're seeing a <laughs> massive explosion in that. Uh, and and uh, the liberal, they're, they're not going to win. It's unfortunate they're not going to win the day because um, I don't I don't want to sound like a jerk, Elliot, but they're dying out. You see those churches just filled with uh, older people, um, and, and you know. You don't see the young people there because they don't want that. It's not a hearkening to tradition. Uh, and there's a very clear problem. I can tell you, Elliot, personally, even though it breaks my heart, you know very well the problem uh, of a lot of priests and bishops in Germany. A lot of the priests and bishops over there are just pushing for gay marriage, pushing for the trans movement, pushing for uh, female priests, female bishops. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. I know that I've got some German people watching. They can confirm it for me. I'm sorry, but those churches are not vibrant. 
that you can walk in there and you can see them. They are dying. They are unhealthy. They're in a poor spiritual state. And it is going to continue like that because the movement that recognizes that this is incorrect, uh, that movement is going to triumph over that. And we know that that's going to be the case, don't we, Elliot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, and it's a wonder why the church has been losing so many people these past few decades. It's corny. Listen to, yeah. uh, I don't remember who did it. It was a YouTube, another Catholic YouTuber, very good, red haired guy. He does pretty good. He was talking about well, how, huh? I think I know what you mean. You, you, you know what you mean. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was talking about how when, you know, the boomer church came about, you know, post-Vatican II, like they wanted to be up with the times. So hey, we want to be trendy. We want to be doing it the way, doing it today. Let's bring in the guitars and the, and the, you know, the hippie music. And it's so funny because that was new for the time, but it's old now. Yeah. And so while they're playing music from the 70s in 2020, that's really corny. And you thought it was cool to stay up with the times, but now you want to play conservative and keep that old 1970s corny nose order music in the churches and the young people do, don't want it. You know what they right. want? They want the timeless music. They don't want anything trendy or cool or uh, you know associated with the times. Give us the thousand year old chance. Give us yeah. the stuff that never goes old. You can't keep up with the world because the world keeps changing. You got to yep. stay with the timeless. And that's what the young people are recognizing. Elliot, I'll be very honest with you. Um, and, and no disrespect to my friends that may like, uh, you know, evangelical music, evangelical bands. But when I go to mass, uh, I don't want to hear Mercy Me. Uh, I don't want to hear uh, the, the, the choir strumming the guitar, singing Mercy yeah. Me or some other evangelical. I don't want to hear that. I don't. Uh, I don't, uh, and I can tell you one thing, my friends don't want to hear that. People that, that I know that are Catholic loving people, I can tell you right now, they don't want to hear that as well. They go there, they want to hear good traditional Catholic music. They want to hear something that will stir up your soul as yeah. it should do. Uh, I don't care about that other music. I really don't. And to be very honest with you, uh, if you Catholics, or anybody tuning in, if you hear the lyrics to that music, they're pretty darn darn terrible. They're <laughs> pretty bad. But you can guarantee that when you hear Gregorian chant or any of these other chants, man, they're directly chants taken from the Bible, directly from the biblical text. And it really, really, truly, that is a whole, whole other feeling that really does, it, you know, makes me feel alive. It makes me feel incredible. Isn't there a great... I'm sure you have... Uh, mm. You have been the recipient of not so great music before, right, Elliot? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty cringe, but I'll tell you, I'm I'm so like you know we're talking about how you know it's easy to say times are bad and you know things are bad, but I tell you what, man, right here on YouTube, I found some of the best Gregorian chant YouTube oh, channels, yeah. man. And I'll just oh, put yeah. it on autoplay and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I do a lot of stretching in here. That's what I do mostly in here. I'll just put it on. I'll light some incense and man, I'll just let that sucker just play over and over again. And, it, and the cha channels get better and better. Oh, yeah. I learned everything I needed to know or, or, or I was catechized to a great degree by YouTube. I'm learning about Gregorian chants on YouTube. So it's pretty cool, you know, maybe the previous generation, you know, they didn't have access because, you know, a lot of things were lost and they didn't know where to find it. My parents, when I teach, I teach my parents some things about faith, they were Catholic, but they didn't know anything about the things that I'm teaching them because they yeah. didn't have access to it. They had access to what was at the, you know, the, the boomer church and uh, whatever was going on TV. I mean, so to, for the, for the faith to be revived, the technology is giving it. A, a big head start. Elliot, when I first uh, became Catholic, it's already been over well over two decades now. I, we, we both uh, very clearly lived in an era where, in order to learn information about lifting as well, about religion, about all of this, mm -hmm. you had to go out and get a book. You had to go buy books. <laughs> or uh, for me, I would buy uh, cassette tapes. Uh, to hear yeah. preaching, yeah, you remember that. You remember those. Uh, I'd go out and I'd nope. buy books. <laughs> Elliot, what? There's no excuse in 2023, almost 2024. If people tell you 
I don't know where to find the information. No, you got it right there at your fingertips. Yeah. You got no excuse. We didn't have this, <laughs> Elliot. When we were younger, we didn't have this. Um, and, and thank the good Lord, we we do have we have access to it now. But I can tell you right now, uh, you want to read the Bible, you can find it online. Uh, although, of course, I do recommend everybody own a family Bible. You want to read the early church fathers, you can find them in New Advent. You can find them yeah. online. You have no excuse. You want to find great Gregorian chat, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, there, there really truly is... There's no excuse in the era that we're currently living in. There really isn't, is there, brother? No. If you're ignorant, it's because you want to be ignorant. You, know, yeah. the, you can find absolutely anything. And it just keeps getting easier and easier. I have this Catholic Bible app. Oh, it's the coolest thing. It's just called Catholic Bible. It's a little black uh, icon. Really? And I get that. It has an AI component to it. So uh, it's just called Catholic Bible. I it, I don't know. I found it on you know the App Store, but when oh. you hit the more button, it has Catholic. It has a um a Bible study AI, and so it has like a Chat GPT inside of it. Whoa! And if I ever want to know something that's the Bible, or if I always want to, if I want to recall something Christ said, or if I will even like to just get like uh, uh you know some idea of what the, what does Christ mean when he says this, I put it. I punch it into this Bible AI. <laughs> and wow. it and it spits me out everything I need to know. So like I don't even have to go and search the Bible. You know how you you have that search or use yeah, a search yeah. engine to find stuff. The, wow. The artificial intelligence gives me everything I need from the Bible. I don't have to look for anything. <laughs> wow, and, and that is called the, the app is called just Catholic Bible. It's just called Catholic Bible. It's a, and you'll know it because wow. it's a little black Bible with a yeah. gold cross and it says Bible. I, like the other day, I was like. Uh, give me five quotes uh, in the Bible about the importance of masculinity. Wow. And it just, it just pulled pull passages, like five passages, like whatever you want, anything you would ask chat GPT, you ask this Bible AI and it'll give you like, I bet if it wanted, if I wanted it to write me a sermon on a, on a yeah. particular chapter in the Bible, it probably would. I, I I'm pretty sure it would. Wow. That, that really is incredible. Uh, <laughs> and I got to ask you, Favorite church father? I put. I know I'm putting you in the spot. Do you have a favorite church father? Yeah, a lot. I like a lot of them. I like Saint John Chrysostom. Oh, wow! Yeah, I was really put on to his work when I was mm. uh, looking into what the early church said about marriage, and he was one of those who like really bridged the gap between you know the way marriage was done and the way marriage was elevated in yeah. uh, in the church. So read a lot of his work on that, but like, there's a good reason why they call him the golden tongue. Like, man, oh, yeah. he, when he's admonishing you, he's admonishing you. And he, he has no problem being as base as he needs to be in order to tell you what it's all about. So I really enjoy, I enjoy his work. Yeah, I love him. Now, now if I had to narrow it, that'd be hard for me. I love Augustine. I love St. Ephraim, St. Augustine, St. Ephraim. St. Irenaeus, mm -hmm. St. John Chrysostom, uh, St. Ambrose. Man, I, they're, they're great. <laughs> they're great figures. But, you know, the, the one thing that I would tell the audience before we wrap up today, these incredible men were great examples of masculinity, incredible examples. And later on in the future, by the way, I will do a show here in my show on my channel where I talk about incredible women as well. Behind those men, a lot of them were taught by their incredible grandmothers or incredible aunts. Very often you don't hear about them but great examples of feminine women as well. Incredible figures that we should look to them as amazing models. Indeed, Mary, an incredible model of following the path of the Lord in every walk of her life. Really, truly, her words, let it be done to me according to thy word. You know, incredible, incredible words today and this incredible feast day. Uh, aren't these figures incredible people to look to as great examples? Would you agree with that, brother? That's why they call them saints, <laughs> right? I mean, these are our perfect examples, and I, I'm so blessed that we have them, right? Because a lot of times, it, I mean, to read the Bible is one thing, and we have the catechism and the magisterium. Um, that's all, you know, divine positive law. It's coming down from heaven, and we we believe it. But to see it in practice yeah. is a totally different thing, right? Oh, to yeah. know about Catholic prayer, but then to read a St. John of the cross or Teresa Avila is like, Whoa. Oh yeah. Mind blowing. And 
you know, I can't help, but I, I have to throw this out there. I grew up with a lot of new age stuff, you know, just you yeah. know, new age philosophies and religions of the East. And when I found Teresa of Avila and when I found John of the Cross and, and, and Christian mysticism, right. Um, and Christian meditation, even, even Ignatius of Loyola with his imaginative prayer. I'm, oh yeah. All this stuff is, you know, they, they call it quantum physics and all that stuff today. But it's yeah. like, man, the, the saints were doing this stuff. The saints were saying oh, yeah. this stuff. The saints were practicing like law of attraction. Law of attraction. Jesus was talking about the saints were doing that stuff. I mean, they're yeah. putting themselves in the in the presence of Christ and having conversations with Him in their imagination and and bringing forth, bringing grace into their lives by doing so. It's yeah. like. Man, they're, they're the OGs. They're the originators of a lot of the, like, you know, new age pagan things that we think is like, oh, wow. So, like, yeah. yo, the saints were doing that, you know, a thousand years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they were, and they were doing it in a very great spiritual kind of manner. They were the OGs, as you say, just great figures to emulate, uh, to, to put forward as, as great examples of people that, as as St. Paul says, they finished the race. They got their... They're crowned there in glory, and we can look to them to be great intercessors. Um, Elliot, I've got to say, man, the time has flown. I've had an incredible time talking with you again, brother. Um, I always do. I always have a great, great time talking with you. Brother, before we wrap up, let me ask you, um, how has your Advent been going so far? God willing, it's been going great. I know it barely began, yeah. but uh, I hope it's been going great for you, brother. You've, uh, you've been into the season yet? Yeah. So I started about a month ago. Because I wanted to do the St. Martin's fast. Wow. And so I'm, I'm learning about uh, the earlier traditions of the church. And they yeah. started Advent mid-November. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and so it, was, it started with the St. Martin's uh, feast and then the St. Martin's fast and extended all the way to Christmas. So I, I couldn't wait to get started with my austerities. I didn't wait until uh, December. <laughs> I started multiple yep. weeks early. That way I can wow. get a head start on the, you know, the, the celebratory, but also penitential season yep. that it is, you know, like we're, we're in okay. waiting. And so, you know, I fast as I'm waiting and I pray as I'm waiting. And I got to say that this, this season, in this year, this season in particular, has brought more spiritual graces into my life than ever before in my life. I mean, like yeah. I said, my prayer life has just has gone, you know, tenfold. And um, and I know it's the graces that are pouring in from God because of the you know the season and oh, know, yeah. my adherence to it. Mm -hmm. Brother, incredible, incredible words. Now, I, one thing that I know very well, uh, I know that. People know who you are. I know you are the man. People know where you're at. Uh, <laughs> people know where to find you as well. Uh, but either which way, I'd like to give you a chance to plug in anything you may be working on. You want to point the audience towards web page, your particular page, or anything mm -hmm. in particular. What is what is Elliot working on today? What would you like to yeah. point the audience to, brother? Well, William, I know you'll appreciate this as an author of many, many books. Um, you know, I don't have many books, but I do have this little one right here called Make wow. Men Strong Again coming out uh, in about a week and a half, the 14th. And if you just go to makemenstrongagain.com, you could sign up to get emails. Let us know. We'll let you know when it's out. And it's based on the 12 pillars of traditional masculinity. A lot of the things that we spoke about here today wow. is in here. It's sort of um, it's a transcript of some of my more powerful videos that were, we edited nicely, put into this little package. And uh, I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's over. It'll be on Amazon, probably, I think like 12 bucks or something like that, but definitely a book that the world needs at this time. Incredible. And I guarantee you in the future, after your book is out, we will definitely bring you back on again to talk about that incredible book. Awesome, brother. You're doing incredible work. You're doing great work. I'm going to be praying for you. I know you'll be praying for me, brother. Thank yes, you for coming brother. on, my friend. My dear friend, and I got to say a little nod, the strongest and best moderator ever. Brother, you have an <laughs> you, you got, got that joke. <laughs> brother, you have an incredible advent. Thank you for coming on, and I'll be in touch, Thank brother. Thank you. God bless you. You too, William. God bless, brother.